have to be completely honest, I didn't have to look very far for this particular male lion. He is very, very close to the Juma Dam. And I think it was him that we heard roaring away this morning while we were sitting with those ground hornbills. We're sitting with Mfumo, one of the four Birmingham boys and the four dominant male lions in this area. It is lovely to see him, and what is truly impressive, of course, about Mfumo is the level of healing that he has shown in terms of fixing his body, fixing that unbelievable injury that he had on his face. It was a time when we were actually concerned about what sort of impact it was having on his health. You can just see it now vaguely, just a little open wound on the left-hand side of, well, his right, our left, left-hand side of his nose. It still hurts every now and again. You can see there's a little bit of a twitch to his face. But other than that, it is looking really very good. Male lions, of course, wear their histories in the form of scars across their faces. And dominant male lions are always scratched up and scarred and almost grizzled looking. And it's all testament to their dedication in terms of establishing and creating a territory for themselves, which isn't always an easy process. And then, of course, once you've established a territory, now you've got, in this case, three other males to contend with when it comes time for meal times and for mating with females. And as a result, the odd lions don't really sit down and have a polite conversation or perhaps conflict resolution. It is all resolved by fighting with each other. Hello, big boy. Sometimes I look at them and it's hard to believe they're the same male lions we saw a year ago or a year and a half ago when they first started moving in. I know they were seen before that, but for me, my first sighting of them was around July last year. And it's quite extraordinary the difference in the lions that came in and the lions that we have now. Established dominant males, their manes have filled out. They're still doing what male lions do best, which is that. Having a jolly good snooze. Hey boy. And he's been up all night making lots and lots and lots of noise. He's tired now. All of that roaring and patrolling takes its toll. And now he just wants to have a little bit of a nap. A nap. Now he, of course, could tell us where the Inkuhumas are. I'm sure he knows. Unfortunately, I don't speak lion, or at least not much lion, not very fluently. I can't ask him. Hey, big boy. To me, he is Mfumo, or Birmingham boy number four. To me, he is the biggest of... Well, I haven't seen all four of them. Actually, Jandra and I were just talking about this now. It has been a long time since we've seen all four of them together actually properly together. They've been in the same area a few times, but to see all four of them together is now a rare sight indeed, which is common with coalitions. They've got to split off and patrol different parts of the territory, make sure that all of their boundaries are protected, and occasionally spend a little bit more time with one pride or another. So in the case of Tinio and Mpumo, they spend more time with the Inkohumas. But it is... It's... It's been a long time since we've been able to compare all of them. Oh, so sleepy. It's a relatively short and very tough life that the male lions lead. But it looks as though, at least in the case of the Inkuhumas, and hopefully for the new generation of Styx cubs, it looks as though they will have a legacy to leave behind. And that, of course, is the aim of all male lions. Survival and propagating their own genetic line. And that is worth, to them, that is worth everything. It's worth fighting to the death for in order to establish themselves. And some of them never manage it. Some just don't succeed. They never manage to establish a territory. But these boys have done well. Five initially, for our newer viewers, a bit of background. There were five of them. Um, they called the Birmingham boys because they came from an area, well, they actually came from a pride known as, in theory, from the Birmingham pride. And the 
the Birmingham Pride gets its name from a property called Birmingham, which is obviously not the actual Birmingham city, but a place just outside of Open Gate. Of course, it's all open to the Kruger and to the Sabi Sand. And they came in, five of them, a year and a half ago, pumped up full of testosterone, kicked out the dominant Matimba males, and have since established themselves as the dominant kings, at least of this area. And it was a, sh it was a brutal takeover, not so much for the Matimbas, because the Matimbas legged it, um, and who can blame them? They were getting to the stage where they were older, it was time for them to move out of that area anyway, whilst they ran the risk of mating with their own daughters. So it was a good thing that happened, but it was a little bit traumatic. It was very traumatic uh, for many of us and many of you that have got to know the lions over the, the past few years. The deaths of several Nkuhumas and, of course, the Styx cubs. All natural part of the takeover process. Is that a scratch on his leg? Yeah. Deep scars that they bear. It's healed up perfectly. I don't remember seeing that, but deep scratches, probably from fighting with other with one of the other males, could even have been that those could even have happened when he was fighting with Tino, with Brent. <laughs> Always entertaining to watch them nod off. You can see it dozing quite happily. I think he was probably responsible for the alarm calls that Herbert heard. The Impala would have started barking away at him. And he's been and had his drink now. Hard to judge how full he is looking at him now. I don't think he's eaten much recently. My suspicion as well, because yesterday, of course, with Byron, he was with Etinho, and the two of them were treating us to an incredible display of their aud <laughs> auditory, that's not what I meant, of their roaring prowess. Incredible sounds that come through. Were you going to roar for us? No, just sniffing the air. Now, I suspect that Etinho is not far away. They generally stick together, these two. While we wait to see what our male lion decides to do, Steph has arrived at a mud wallow. I'm so sorry, I'm just right in the middle of a conversation that will give us a very, very exciting moment spent with an unusual bird. Sorry, bear with me one moment. Oh, sorry, um, a dual transmission there. Um, whereabouts were those birds? Oh, awesome. Thank you. I know that pair. I'm pretty sure I know which tree that is. Thanks so much. I'm going to be making my way there shortly. <laughs> it's open lock. Sorry, everybody. Um, it, whenever we do call in birds, it's usually for quite an exciting reason. Um, so that's why I'm just trying. I know you're looking at a lion and I'm busy talking about a bird. Uh, but for our newer viewers, I'm using a radio that allows us to connect with all of the guides in the area so that we can share information, so that we can plan out our searches and our mornings and our afternoons, where we're going to go, how we're going to do things. And of course, also to make sure that these animals don't get mobbed by vehicles. So, of course, in certain areas where that isn't the case, um, you get lots and lots of vehicles moving around, um, whereas in this particular area it is restricted to three at a time, uh, sometimes less. But sometimes we do use the Game Drive channel to share exciting and unusual sightings, and I'm going to be going to this particular bird in the not-too-distant future. It's not a new one for some of you. Some of you will have seen them before, but I do really, really enjoy them. So I don't think Mfumo is going to be up to too much. 
I think we will we'll leave him after this. We'll leave him in the next few minutes and we'll go off in search of that bird before the end of the sunset safari. But for now, Mfumo is snoozing away quite happily. He was restless for a little while. He was sort of flopping rolling over, flicking his tail, uh, no yawns, but he did look as though he wasn't quite fully relaxed. But I have to tell you now, that's a very relaxed looking lion. That, that is a lion that doesn't have a, too much on his mind and isn't really planning on going too far. So we'll probably leave him oh, that's unfortunate. My, oh, we're back. Okie dokie. So the audio came back just in time for my stomach to rumble, is essentially what you're saying. <laughs> we get up very early, okay? <laughs> and sometimes a breakfast is much needed. And I'm sure Mfumo agrees. I'm reassessing how full he is. He has actually had a meal relatively recently. Uh, perhaps he joined the Inkahumas last night, I'm not sure. But he's not empty-bellied. He's relatively round. All in all, full stomach, he's just had a drink, and now he's got a nice comfortable patch of ground with guaranteed shade. I don't think he's going to be going anywhere. I'm still just flabbergasted by the healing power of animals, I have to say. And for a human being, imagine having a seething open wound or seeping open wound very badly infected right on your sinuses and your cheek to the point that it was bubbling when he breathed. Imagine a human being with an injury like that. You'd be in hospital, you'd be on, you'd be on 10 different types of antibiotics. We are just, at this point, no longer on quite the same level as the animals. Of course, there's lots of reasons for that. Um, we're completely, you can't really compare us. We're apples and oranges. But it is at the amount of pain that they are able to bear and the, the speed of their healing and the resilience of their bodies to infection is humbling, I think is perhaps the good word. Almost all of the animals out here have a way of humbling us, whether it's their senses or their strength or their speed. We're relatively, obviously intellectually we're a different kettle of fish, but biologically we're relatively a feeble species. Oh, I'm going to go and find you the exciting bird, hopefully, while I do that. Steph has arrived at his final mud wallow. 